uh, on the on the live chat right after. Um, <laughs> we have a few topics for this uh, this emission today, and here you go. Uh, the first topic we're going to be talking is the Overclockers League at HWBot. With or without competition points, the recent change and the few explanation for that. Um, Timothy, uh, what was uh, the uh, the change in this uh, Overclocking League at HWBot? Um, so um, initially, like uh, we mentioned in the in the show, we just um, we just played. So there have been some um, some developments done for the OC Esports side. And uh, due to that, um, some of the changes that we made so uh, we could have it as we wanted it on OC Esports ended up uh, having repercussions, uh, unforeseen repercussions on the HWBot page, and especially on the Overclock and League rankings that affected the Elite and the Extreme rankings. Um, this is mainly because back at that time, um, the competition points were also uh, added up to the sum of the points that you have for the overclocking uh, overclockers league. Um, so it resulted in some guys bumping up a lot and some of the guys dropping like 30 places or more in some cases. Um, so yeah, there, there had been a lot of confusion at the time because uh, it was a surprise kind of and all of a sudden it arrived, you know. and. So there, there was a poll, and in the end, uh, for it, it was decided uh, by the community that uh, competition points should be part of those uh, of that league rankings. Um, the only question that remains is that it should um, it should be calculated in a way that is uh, that everyone kind of agrees on and that is fair for everybody. But uh, they should not be all added up as uh, just exactly the same weight they have on OC esports. Um, because if you if you see on OC Esports every competition, there's different levels of competition. Whether it's a live qualifier, whether it's a live final, or whether it's just an online competition. So be, depending what type it is, you get more or less points, and those points have more or less weight onto the onto the rankings. So this is mainly yeah, what is the concern? So right now, the if you look at the but there's uh, there's uh, simply no competition points added. They have been removed. It's gonna stay like this until there's a. Uh, like a, a common ground solution found for, for those rankings. Um, uh, right now on the screen, you can see the uh, official ranking without any uh, special uh, uh, competition points. I think we just uh, lost our friends William, but that's going to be okay. We're going to continue like this. Um, important things to note is uh, that right now, Dan Cup is the first. Uh, yeah. That's I right. think so. Dan Cup is the first, but like you see on the on the chat, uh, new, new life of C says he went 150 places. So that that really had a, a quite an impact, uh, yeah. And especially like I said, it's it only affected elite and extremes because uh, that those competitions points that were part of the ranking were only applied for historic reasons to those two leagues because the other leagues, so rookie league, novice league, and um, Enthusiast, though the, this league where they, they were not here at that time, or where the, those points were part of the algorithm. So, um, so right now everyone is on the same standpoint of all the different leagues, but eventually competition points should be added up um, to all the leagues in some kind of uh, calculated way. Okay, so to make it clear, right now you have uh, a difference. You have a you have competition points on ocesport.io, but you have right. regular points for uh, the regular people on HWBot. That's right. That's two so different on HWBot, yeah, you, you get your points uh, for your submission. So this is really uh, about your hardware and how you rank your hardware in the different uh, in the different rank rankings, right? Global, etc. But OC Esports, like you say, is really only, only competitions, just competitions. I see. Um, I have a question for Dennis. Uh, Dennis, you're uh, competing in the uh, Extreme League. Um, what is your opinion on that uh, change of point that to have the competition point to be uh, calculated in the uh, in the overall ranking in, uh, in the in the next few weeks? Um, well, how do yeah. you plan to compete with that? <laughs> well, I'm actually okay with it. I'm, um, you know, I looked at my ranking just right before we started this live stream, and I'm currently 39th in the United States, which is actually pretty good. With the change in the competition points, I dropped 52 points, or 52 spots, I should say. But that's out of everybody worldwide. So since I didn't have a lot of competition points, that didn't change my ranking too much. So you know, the way that I see it, I'm fine with it. In terms of, you know, I can see where a lot of people would be a little bit concerned with that, because 
if they were trying to attain a certain ranking and they were counting on those competition points and the fact that they spent time to do those competitions and now they're losing those points, that can actually be kind of a big thing. But, you know, as they move forward with this OC Esports IO and, you know, away from hardwarebot.org in terms of competition organization, you know, there's going to be some change and it's, you know, there's a big algorithm in terms of how those points are calculated. So it's, you know, growing pains. It's going to be a good thing though. Yeah, I do actually like the way that the, the competitions get calculated in the in your overall uh, statement as of, uh, as an overclocker, as an overall ranking. Uh, especially when you spend time on the competitions, uh, you can bench a lot of hardware, spending a lot of time making very good scores on the hardware. But if you spend time on competitions, you have like the the time constraint, you have a few other limitations on the hardware and so on. So uh, I, I do personally think that this uh, competition point should, uh, should also stay. Actually, I did vote to have the competition to stay, uh, but maybe a bit more um, adjusted in the weights and the, and the weights calculated. Yeah. Um, uh, right now, we can uh, have a look at who is the first on the Overclockers League. Uh, the regular one, the one uh, without the competition point. Um, if you can see it, it's Dan Cop that is the f uh, the the number one. Uh, followed closely by Eight Pack, then Team AU from Australia, uh, Smoke from Russia, and then in fifth place we have Sofo 9990. And then Derbauer from Germany at six and Stepanzi at seven. So all the all the names you can see here in the top ten. Actually, we have uh, Strat and Wizard Theodo in the uh, nine and tenth, and uh, Vivi at eighth. All these people already compete in some competitions uh, in the, in the past, and uh, this top ten is actually quite um, fighting quite a lot to uh, to get their top uh, top ranking there. Uh, if we have a look at the ranking on the uh, OC eSports site, uh, the official world uh, overclocking ranking for uh, this uh, seasons, I think that's the right one. Uh, no, that's the competition one. Yeah. Competi <laughs> competition wise for 2015, um, Extreme Addict is the first. Uh, that is explained because he won the HyperX OC Takeover uh, World Final. So you, you got a lot of points for that. Uh, Timote, yeah. you want to add anything about the uh, these uh, special rankings? Well, not so much. I mean, like now it's all uh, it's all gonna be based on what the community decides in the end and uh, what exactly uh, everyone kind of reaches as an agreement. I think like most of those kind of uh, of decisions that uh, really impact um, what the community is evaluating as being a best overclocker or not. Um, so it's going to be mainly based on that argument and uh, there has to be some compromise to be found between some guys that are going to go down in the ranking and some others that are, that are going to go up. And I mean, there's, there's, there's definitely a need to find somewhere a common ground where everyone is happy with, the, with both rankings. So the over official world overclocking ranking, which is uh, about competition and the overclocker leagues which is about your submissions over time plus competitions. And then I do actually think that's, uh, that's going to be a, a good way to, to see who's, who can uh, pull very nice scores in competitions, but doesn't mm -hmm. have much time to, uh, to bench at home and, and do scores, and who is actually consistent, a lot of scores at home and uh, good scores in competitions, good ranking competitions. Um, the competition points we have to adjust because we talked we did talk about Extreme Addicts, uh, but the uh, Hyperx uh, event, the competition points is for all the competitions, right? Yeah, so if uh, truth, if you if you pull up the over official world overclocking ranking on those esports, uh, you can you can if you click on that bubble uh, with the total of points for Extreme Addict, you can see where he actually got his point from. So you can see that the 250 points that he gets are coming for the, his first place at the Hyperx OC takeover. So the 250 points, that's what you get. Uh, on those esports, on that official world overclocking ranking for first place at a live competition. So it's a competition for which you qualified and then you competed live against others. If you look at someone a bit more down the list, for example, I you can take De Delhi, for instance, uh, number 10. Yeah. So you can see his points are completely, completely sourced differently, right? He mainly gets his point from the Challenger uh, series uh, that is running at, uh, on those esports. Uh, he gets it actually from different uh, different divisions, 
etc. And he also gets points from being 26 right now, the current ROG OC Showdown Extreme Series Round 1 competition, right? So every every stuff, every stuff competition you participate to is going to yield you a certain amount of points depending how, how high you rank and what type of competition it is. So it's very interesting because that makes people that participate over the the, the, the whole year in all those competitions uh, capable of also ranking somewhere near the guys that actually also win one or two competitions a year, but that are live ones. So it's a very different OC focus. Some guys just focus on high profile competitions. Some others that might not have the finances to do that are going to focus on all the smaller challenges they can do, which are still very fun to achieve. And then usually there's also some cool prizes to win. Yeah, just for example, um, uh, Dr. Wiz from South Africa, uh, he mm -hmm. got the most, he is third in this ranking, but he got that from four different competitions. So that's actually yeah. quite interesting to see that uh, uh, even like anyone can compete and, uh, and have his uh, chance to be in that uh, special ranking. Yeah. Um, Dennis, what do you uh, what do you expect in terms of uh, competitivity for the overclockers in, uh, in the, the 2015 season? Actually, well, I'm hoping that we'll see a few new faces, you know, because in the past, a lot of these overclocking competitions were kind of the, you know, everybody from the same, you know, same names, you know, uh, previous, like some of the major ones like the ASUS and the MSI events, they were all kind of the, you know, who's who. But uh, in 2015, I'm hoping that we get a few new faces in here and that we can actually structure the competition points so that everyone can be competitive. You know, that's going to be really important to garner more pe more involvement, more get more people involved and, um, you know, and being able to move things around. I do agree with that actually. <laughs> um, let's let's go to the next topic. The next topic is drumroll: the Challenger series. So, what is the Challenger series? Uh, it's basically is the uh, the Pro OC uh, Road to Pro OC uh, competition. So that's all the uh, divisions you have on the on uh, OCEsport.io. Uh, mainly, you have uh, up to seven divisions yet that you can choose from, but uh, I think that Timothy, you can explain that a bit, uh, a bit more how it works. Yeah. So the um, the the, um, the challenger series, like you mentioned, is part of the 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 Road to Pro section of the OC Esports sites. And what what that is is uh, the the Road to Pro has two parts. There's the Pro OC series, and there's the challenger series. So for the challenger series. Uh, what is interesting is that um, usually we are used to see competitions where uh, you're you're like anyone can really participate or you have limitations to your hardware but usually it's always the latest hardware right and if you have a core i5 or core i3 why well, you just simply cannot compete there's just no way even if you have the right motherboard you just there's no way to even try right so what is interesting with those divisions is that it works in a way that every division has a different hardware set limitation. So you have a division for Core i7, you have one for Core i5, Core i3, you have one for AMD, you have uh, stuff for uh, for, the, cheap, uh, for the SLCs on your smartphones, you have like all kinds of stuff. You even have one for legacy hardware, which is for uh, older stuff. So there's some, uh, there's a bit of everything there, and um, the, the idea is, is to supposedly have it um, have the other clockers to choose one division for at least uh, one round, so which is about three months time. Uh, right now, this is the, the first year we are running the, the OC Esports uh, platform at uh, full operation. So, so for this first year, you can get points on, across all of those divisions, so, but eventually it's going to be limited to one. You will be able to participate maybe in one or more, but you will only get points from one specific division. So the, the idea is here to make sure that uh, people that have a less budget or that are just focusing on what they actually have at home. For example, some guys just are big fans of AMD. Well, they, they want to have competitions and be competitive in their AMD rankings among other AMD, AMD users, right? And it would not make sense to have them face uh, Core i7 or x99 platforms and things like that. So, so that's the idea behind it. How that works? I want to if I want to participate in this competition as uh, okay myself. I'm in the uh, in the extreme league because I use the liquid nitrogen and uh, and and so on. But uh, uh, what do you like? What can I do if I want to compete? I just uh, choose like division five. Go there. You should choose the division for with the hardware you have. 
Um, so I, I, the, no. the idea of the division is not to push people to purchase hardware so they can actually, you know, uh, enter the competition. There's competitions for pretty much all sorts of hardware. So uh, if you have a Core i5 or if you have a Core i7, then you should go to the Core i5 or the Core i7 division, right? Um, so that way, that way you're also leaving uh, space for others that, that want to be in the other competitions to be by themselves there as well. And you also face people that have the equal gear to you, so the challenge is a lot more interesting as well. Okay, so let's make uh, the example that I want to compete with the Core i5 and the GTX 970 or uh, GTX 780, Radeon 290, etc. Uh, everything mm -hmm. below that, I can just go to the Division uh, 2 Round 1 and, yep. and uh, re 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 I don't say that. register myself to it and compete against all the other guys. That's it, yeah. That's a, as simple as that. Then the rest of the competition of the division works just like a regular competition. You have, you have a three to five stages. So for the divisions here, it's all, always five stages, and you just uh, submit in each. And there's at the end of the uh, at the end of the round, there's a there's a, a round champion that is the number one. But there's also at the end of the season, there's going to be a division champion. So over the over the course of the year, you will be able to follow. Uh, the ranking, if, and if you keep staying on in that i5, for for instance, division, then uh, you can actually gather as much points as possible in that specific division and end up to be champion in that one. I really like the way that if you compete in this uh, in these divisions, you're gonna compete against people that have the same resources as you. So you don't have uh, someone throwing like uh, hundred and hundred and hundred of CPUs just testing them and trying to compete for the top spot. But you can compete with everyone that yeah. have the same resources as you. Uh, That's it. You use just uh, just current hardware, existing stuff, and and yeah, most of the time, if you want to be around the top, you're gonna, especially for Core i7 things and etc. You're gonna need to use LN2, but it's still very fun for people that don't because the, you're spread out, and usually people with LN2 will have Core i7, so there's a lot more space for doing other stuff with the Every, other Everyone have a chance. Uh, if you are on the live chat of Twitch, don't forget to ask us any question regarding this show and let us know if you want to participate in one of the Challenger series. Uh, maybe you're already registered in that, uh, in one of these. Uh, let us know where you are and maybe you're gonna so, uh, see your profile on the live. Um, Dennis, as an overclocker, what do you think about this uh, uh, Challenger series? Like the, the way you can divide a uh, thing uh, against people that have the same uh, kind of hardware it um it's an interesting concept i mean it allows for a broader reach in terms of overclocking um in, in competitions that is you know if you had some of those top tier competitions it always had a requirement that you had to use a certain motherboard and a certain processor and it had to be from a certain manufacturer so it really limited a lot of people from entering um, these challenger series are really nice in that you can just grab anything that you have off the shelf, and if you stay within that that league throughout the entire, um, you know, the entire run, with, throughout the stages and the different, um, you know, one competition, two competition, you can get a lot of points for that, and it really just kind of makes it easier for a lot of people. Um, personally, I'm not really a fan of it, but um, that's mostly because I like to bench just about everything. You know, I'll get. A new motherboard in for for review and then a video card and then i'll go and try to get the most out of it just to see how many hardware points i could get or if i could reach somebody's score or even get more global points in a certain league ranking but that's because i prefer the league style and not necessarily the challenge style but you know it's it broadens the the horizons for a lot of people that are looking to get into overclocking or want to just take a different approach I see. Um, actually, there was there was a question from from Pine Three Road Nine Thirty. Uh, do you have a chance just using my existing hardware? I would say yes, and I would prove it. Check that out. Uh, if we go to the division series that we add, so that's division two, uh, Core i five, uh, something below a GTX nine seventy or seven eighty or uh, Air nine uh, Air two ninety uh, from uh, from AMD. If you want to compete there, you can actually compete with the first one. The first one is a Aero Tracks. and if you look at his uh, XTU score, uh, that's uh, mainly a CPU benchmark. You see that was done on uh, stock cooling and actually it was done on air cooling. So you have all your chains, especially if you have a water cooling in your systems, you might have uh, a lot of uh, opportunity to uh, 
catch that score. Um, yeah. Maybe there is especially his overclocking is not that high too, so there's quite a lot of room still to push on air or even with the water cooling. Yeah, he made his core with uh, the the core i5 4690K. Uh, it's at five gigahertz, so that's pretty much pretty much every everyone can achieve that. So you have your chance with your existing hardware. Uh, you don't have. Uh, there will maybe have people that use LN2 in the in the future, but keep in mind, you all the guys using LN2 usually end up in the uh, top high-end category because uh, if you spend time for LN2, you usually spend time on the hardware and spend money on that too. Um, so yeah, if you if anyone want to catch up on uh, Aero Tracks, that is the first one of the competitions of the Division <laughs> Two Run uh, Run One. Uh, sorry, man, uh, I didn't expect to uh, to to make people running after you and after your scores, but that's the good proof uh, of what's uh, going on here in the divisions. Um, yep. uh, Tim Timothy, do you want to add anything regarding that ranking? Um, no, I think that's about it. You, we mentioned most of what is to mention. Now it's all about seeing how the competition evolves and uh, what are we going to, yeah, how is it going to happen for the year? It's going to be very interesting. Yeah, actually, uh, I have a lot of uh, excitement for that. I, I can't wait to see who are the guys that are going to put their, their special cutouts to, to, to show, hey, I'm here, I am from home, I never participate to any official competitions, but I can do it. And here's the proof. Um, next topic, and that's where we have our special guest here with us. That's the HWBOT World Tour 2015 North America at LAN ETS here in Montreal. That's why we have uh, William from the LAN ETS organizer. Uh, William, you are in the organiza organization for quite some time. Uh, can you just introduce us the LAN ETS, what it is, why it's uh, important in Canada, and uh, what was your work at the LAN ETS for that many years? Yeah, well, thanks for the introduction. As you said, uh, I'm a member of LAN ETS since uh, September 2011. Uh, basically, LAN ETS, as the name states, it's a LAN party. It's currently the biggest LAN party in Canada. We have uh, over a thousand computers on site. Uh, well, it's a big, you know, a big festival. Uh, you have casual players, semi-professional, professional gamers, and they basically just compete for cash prizes or material prizes during activities on stage from sponsors. And uh, for maybe, I don't remember, three years exactly, we did, we're doing overclocking. So that's where the relationship with uh, HWBot and, uh, started. So this year, we're very happy to uh, welcome HWBot World Tour 2015 at the event and be the... Uh, the first stop. You're the first the official dollar. stop of this tour. That's the first time we are organizing this, and you guys are the first. Um, just as a reminder, the LAN ETS is in Montreal. Um, it's open to the public, so any, anyone that uh, is near Montreal can attend the, the show, right? Yeah, exactly. It's, uh, it's free between uh, 8 a.m. and uh, 6 p.m. So during the night you need a spectator pass we call which is a ten dollar or you can just buy the spectator pass and you have a 24-hour access to the event and then you usually end up with uh, on uh, it's uh, so that start on friday evening and you end up on uh, on sunday afternoon on sunday you have all the finals uh you usually in the auditorium right yeah exactly we do we're doing uh, live finals on stage we have a uh, 300 seats so a pretty cool production you have finalists live on stage so with all the twitch streaming so it's pretty cool yeah uh to be honest it's been three years i'm doing overclocking there for for you for you guys um the, the the mood at the at the event is always uh, specials there's always a nice uh, nice game you have like the uh, the special the uh, find something in the line or the first one to bring that stuff here is uh, is something it's it's actually quite fun <laughs> so sometimes like okay the first one to bring me a keyboard win a mouse and then you have people like playing just yeah. unplugging the keyboard running through the land just to bring that to the uh, to the stage that uh, actually that that's quite that's quite fun well <laughs> <laughs> well thank you guys so much for welcoming us to the uh to the, to the LAN ETS and uh, making sure that we can have the first stop of the HWBOT World Tour 2015. Um, do you have any, uh, what, what are the sponsors of the uh, LAN ETS so far? Uh, we have a bunch. Uh, I'm not going to name the, all, them all because I'm going to forget someone. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, we have a lot of uh, sponsor coming back every year. Of course, you have the ETS University. They're pretty big. Uh, 
hosting the event every year. And uh, of course, we have a microbyte, which is also a sponsor of yours. So uh, we have HyperX, we have Cisco, of course. We have a Videotron, which is our internet provider. We have a five gigabyte dedicated internet connection. That's the fastest we can cool. get in the island, right? Yeah, we're going to make a, sure to use most of it. Yeah, <laughs> it's, a, it's a good way to use your SSD during the event. <laughs> oh, let's, we a, let's say we used to benchmark computers, but we could benchmark the internet connection at this event. <laughs> yeah, basically, you need to find a speed test able to benchmark it also. <laughs> That's a problem. The real, the real question is, can you overclock it? <laughs> no need. Cisco routers, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, then you overclock the connection. Not stable. Half of Montreal doesn't have internet anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that the usual? <laughs> <laughs> oh god so um yeah so uh, yeah as i said it's been as you said although that's been three years we're doing uh overclocking um uh, shows it used it used to be just a show there um uh, what do you think there's uh, do you think there's there could be a synergy between uh the land party event and this kind of overclocking event at the same time because we're both in the in a competing world like we have both ranking and stuff like this uh we do benchmark you guys do games uh it's uh it's a similar actually well, I think uh, since we started doing overclocking, uh, people are pretty curious, you know. Sometimes, uh, you know, gamers, they're not really used to overclocking, you know. Sometimes they just buy the i7 processor and they put it in their computer and it's running their game. They don't question themselves. But when we do overclocking, show, uh, showcase on the stage, people are very curious. So I think it's, it's a good ad addition to the event. Uh, we always try to add something different, something special every year. And I uh, think uh, overclocking is a good fit for us because some of our sponsors are also sponsoring uh, overclocking events. So. Yeah, indeed. Uh, talking about the sponsors, we want to thank uh, Microbytes. That's uh, one of the shops in Montreal that is actually uh, sponsors of the LAN ETS as well as the HGDBot World Tour 2015 North America stop at LAN ETS. That's a long name. And uh, we want to <laughs> thank all the um, uh, Praxer that will be uh, delivery the, uh, the LN2. We got a thousand liters of liquid nitrogen. And um, uh, Timote, who am I uh, for forgetting here? Uh, you should uh, you should essentially also mention uh, the guys from Overclock.net, who is uh, co-organizing this event. Uh, there's um, so th those guys are helping us out um, uh, to to yeah to support the event in terms of uh, reaching to the American guys. Uh, it's true that uh, that usually uh, the community in the in the U.S. or in North America in general is. Um, is uh, still very very organized around those uh, those online communities, and uh, it's it, it was very important I think for the for the event to be to be yeah to be hooked up and to be connected with with one of those communities and overclock.net is a is a very big and active one right now so it's definitely super cool to be with uh, with them for this event uh, like you mentioned the, the, there's microbytes so the the the, the computer uh, shop retailers in uh, Canada. And there's also uh, Dimatech, which is an uh, Italian manufacturer of bench tables. And cases also. And cases as well, yes. <laughs> um, talking about Overclock.net, uh, these guys are actually the third team in the uh, competition ranking. Uh, if you go to ocesport.io and you go for uh, e uh, OC team ranking, you're going to see that they are at the third spot here. That's the, Pretty active team. Yes. Yeah, pretty active. They, they used to, to have... Uh, I think they still have for this month uh, the the most friendly rookie um, compliant <laughs> team. So that's the team that welcomed most of the new guys in the overclockings to join them there. Uh, they do help out with tweaks. They do help out with some settings and so on. So if you guys are on the Twitch channel right now, you can go to overclock.net after after the show. Not now, of course. You can go to the uh, overclock.net forum, sign up, and you can uh, have some of your questions answered there. Uh, talking about the live chat, uh, if you guys are from around here and plan to go to the LAN ETS, uh, don't hesitate to, to, to tell us so and uh, to come uh, say hi, of course, and compete with, uh, see, the, uh, see the, the event and uh, come with us. Maybe you can be trained for the special World Series for Amateur competitions. Uh, 
Uh, Timothy, what's I, the, the, the World Series for Amateur? Uh, anyone well, can join? Good. What's going to happen there? Yeah, it's very good you mentioned it because uh, even uh, with having William here, it's also very interesting the fact that this competition is open to everyone. So it's open to uh, the gamers that are attending the LAN ETS. It's open to uh, overclockers that do have some basic knowledge of overclocking. And it is also open to simple visitors of the LAN ETS, so people that are living around and that would like to swing by. So what we are going to do is uh, basically, yes, one, host a competition, but before that, uh, we're going to uh, have workshops to teach people the very basics of overclocking. Something super simple from uh, doing some on-air OC with <laughs> a, a Pentium Anniversary Edition chip. Um, just, yeah, just very simple stuff, learning the basics of CPU OC, maybe some very quick uh, run through the memory uh, profile, what is XMP, how to use it, what you can get out of it, and uh, then explaining basically how do we benchmark and how to submit a score and then that's it then you're probably good to go to uh, submit into a, an actual competition so we give you a system you have 30 minutes uh, so microbytes is going to be providing the system so they will be ready there you just you don't have to bring anything for that one you just submit a score on the first day so on Saturday we do qualifiers and then on the Sunday we're gonna have some finals with the top guys of that that competition so, so it's going to be very, very interesting and fun to watch, I think. So for the uh, for the World Tour, there's going to be like a pro uh, series, the World Series, with the uh, the, the professional ones, uh, like extreme overclockers, people that know how yeah. to use LN2, and there's going to be the amateur. And the amateur is, okay, William, you, you should, maybe you don't have, you won't have the time, but you should come over at the at the amateur, uh, get trained for 45 minutes, and uh, then you can uh, oh, just uh, find make some Oh, 45 minutes of free time during the event. That's going to be a challenge. But if I have some time, <laughs> I will come by and uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Try, uh, and, and if you do so, talking. if or you do so, to. I will make sure that's gonna be live. <laughs> <laughs> why not? Why not? I'm yeah. gonna play the game, no problem. <laughs> so uh, as as we said, uh, the the World Series for Amateur is open to anyone, even if you are visitors or a gamer. Yeah. You can just and come the, over. The one that is for extreme, then you need to uh, have a bench squad ticket because there you need it and of course. Uh, you won't be using LN2 as amateur because uh, no. you, you need uh, at least a, a small training for that and all the uh, experts can uh, can use it. So if you want to come and use LN2, you go for uh, you go on the hwbot.org website, you buy your tickets to be at the hwbot World Tour uh, 2015 North America stop. Uh, then you can get unlimited LN2. If you are a visitors or a gamer at the LAN ETS, like one of the southern gamers that's going to attend there, you can just come over, come by, say hi, just uh, take the workshop for 30, 30 minutes, 40 minutes, and then we give you the systems. You just uh, do whatever you can with the systems, and if you're good enough, you're going to be there the next day uh, for the final and maybe win something after that. Yeah. Ah, good, I like it. Uh, Dennis, uh, what do you think about this, uh, this kind of uh, workshop? Training workshops people. Are, workshops are really important, especially in a setting like LAN ETS, where the majority of the people are there for you know gaming, LAN gaming. But there's always lulls in between rounds where people are up walking around, so they can they can come by and learn a little bit about overclocking and maybe carve some time out to compete in the rookie rumble. And you know, I think it's great. And it will also kind of introduce them to the overclocking hardware, the you know the specific stuff that's out there, like the anniversary edition Pentiums and even the K editions of um, Core i5 and i7. So, so so all the people for the amateur will be using a Z99 uh, mainboard. Um, there is no Z97, Z97, Z99, whatever. It's X9. Okay, everyone from the World Series for Amateur going to be using these chipsets. <laughs> Oops, I, I say something I should not. Be. Oops, so Intel going to call my cell phone and say, "Yeah, stop doing that now." <laughs> well, so all everyone from the World Series for Amateur will be using uh, Z97 mainboard and the G3258 CPU. That's the Intel Pentium anniversary. So that's a special CPU that is unlocked. Uh, that's actually it's very cheap. You can uh, learn perfectly how to overclock for that uh, it's not difficult so even if you have uh, just the basics about computers you can always come over and, and do that all the systems for the world series for matter are provided by uh, microbytes uh, as i said and introduced them the uh, they are like a, a, a 
a series of shops here in uh, in Quebec area. Uh, they are although the sponsors of the of the LAN ETS uh, with with Williams. Um, we have another sponsor, Dimastec, that is doing the is pro that are producing bench table and cases. We have a Praxer that's gonna be delivering some LN2 for the pro guys. And we also have, of course, uh, Overclock.net, that is our uh, co-organizer for uh, the event. Overclock.net, they're pretty cool. They, they're doing land parties, so... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Did, did you know them from the past, uh, William? Well, I never talked personally to the organizer, but I know they're doing uh, some land parties. So I'm always checking what's going on around Canada. <laughs> yeah, well, they do what in Toronto, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, actually, the um, the they, they used to have like a bench party and land party at the same time. Um, not quite as big as the LAN ETS, as we say, the LAN ETS is the biggest in Canada, like a thousand gamers attending. Uh, actually, it's gamers. It's not only PC gamers that are attending. You also have a, a console party, if I'm right. Yeah, we have a console section. Uh, we're expecting maybe uh, over two hundred people. So basically, you have. Uh, Ten, uh, 1,000 PC, 200 consoles, so there's a lot of people. That's, That's not gonna counting be fun. Uh, spectators and visitors. And That's going to be fun. So the LAN ETS, as well as the HDB Bot uh, World Tour 2015 North America stop, will be from uh, Friday evening at uh, the 6th of March. Uh, the 7th of March, that is a Saturday, and the 8th of March, that is a Sunday. So pretty much from like Friday evening till uh, Sunday afternoon, it's uh, open to the public. So you guys can come over and see that. Uh, that will be for the uh, HW Bot World Tour that's going to be broadcasted here on uh, Twitch on the Overclocking TV channel, as well as I think that you guys from the LAN ETS are going to be broadcasting all of some of the competitions. Yes, exactly on uh, twitch.tv slash team slash LAN ETS. And we're going to add your stream. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna so be in the pool. Everything will be at the same place, at the <laughs> same place. Don't forget, guys, if you're on the live chat of Twitch uh, and you're planning to come to the LAN ETS event or the HDBot World Tour, you can just uh, come and say hi and just say hi on the live chat. Um, well, thank you guys for uh, for being here. We have a, we're gonna take a few more questions from the live chat. We have a few questions that. Uh, uh, I think that was Odo uh, Pine Three Nine Thirty. Oh no, Van Van C. Clyde uh, that was uh, asking us a question. Uh, I'm thinking of upgrading my GeForce Five Fifty Ti to the GTX Nine Seventy. Maybe I should uh, upgrade Odo my CPU, but I already got an i five. Um, <laughs> to be honest, just upgrade the graphic card. Just take the GTX Nine Seventy, keep the i five, and go in ocesport.io. <laughs> Register for Division Two, Round One, and you maybe be a, you can maybe buy beat the scores from uh, Iroras. Uh, I, can't, I can't remember his name. What do, what do you have against this poor guy? <laughs> I don't know. He's first. He's first in the division. First. We have to take his score down. <laughs> <laughs> He's German, okay. that's why I'm French and uh, French and Germany. Like, no, it's not okay. No, just uh, just kidding. It's uh, that guy is the first. He deserved this. Is uh, it's his moment of glory. He's first for Division Two uh, as far as now. So, let's hope that he yeah. can uh, he can finish in these positions. So, is that a competition truth? That's not it. Um, <laughs> yeah, I had a question about the competitions. Uh, what happens if I want to compete in more than one divisions? Is that possible? Can I get point for that? Right now you can, yes. But it's not supposed to be like this. It's going to change, yes. So in, in um, the end, if you pick a division, you're going to stick to it for the, for the complete round? The idea, yeah, that's, that's the idea. In the, when everything is in place, that's, that's how it's going to be. Good. I do, uh, I do have some expectation about all that. Um, let's have a look at some of the other competitions for the past, uh, for the next uh, few 10 minutes. Uh, we have the Novice Nimbles, right? Yeah. And uh, the Novice Nimbles is something between uh, the Rookie Rumble. So the Rookie Rumble is when you just do your first benchmark and that's pretty much where everyone will be happening after the amateur. After three months, you're not a rookie anymore. So you become a novice. And well, then that's it. You so can you compete used in Novice Nimbles. Yeah, yeah, you used to be. Uh, you used to arrive, you start, and you eventually enter the rookie rumble competition, which is the the most accessible competition you can find for a rookie. Right? It's uh, just for people that have less than three months of experience on the site, and usually, um, 
older guys there never have done really high, uh, high kind of uh, performance overclocking or things like that. So they're just very rookie, right? And uh, so this lasts for three months. So you can expect to enter about three rookie rumbles uh, if you get the right timing. Um, this gives you enough chances to discover the competitive environment of overclocking and how to, to get around the around the, the competition structure, so there's different stages and how to get your points, etc., etc. But then after that, until now, there was no no bridge between this rookie stage and the the moment when you enter actually the, the bigger competition. So competition, for example, by MSI, Asus, or Gigabyte, or or even HWBot, right? So we added one more, which is called a novice nimble, and this one is for novices only. So for people that have experience between from three months to a year at HWBot that are still not doing LN2, so you are not facing the guy that have uh, liquid nitrogen, because if you do, you just end up in the extreme uh, league, no more novice. And uh, so as a novice in that competition, you discover what is uh, teamwork about. So it's no more just uh, competing in a competition by yourself, but you actually have to join a team, so an existing team at HIBOT. So it could be, for instance, like we mentioned, the overclock.net team, but it could be any other team. Uh, French teams like Clan OC or Kirkland are very active. There's some teams in Germany, such as PC Games Hardware, that are also very active. And those guys, um, the point is, once you join those teams, you just, yeah, you just learn to compete with others. So here, the scores are no more just based on the highest score of that per, of one of the person in your team, but it's an average of the top three scores of your your team that submitted of of your teammates and you that submitted in that one stage. So it makes it very interesting because you have to yeah you have to work out a strategy somehow to make sure that you keep the top spot. And uh, the hardware is also divided in the fact that you need AMD uh, graphics cards or NVIDIA graphics cards. So you need both. So some guys might not have both. So you kind of have to work out a team that can uh, put together the hardware. So it's very similar actually to the HIBOT team cup in some way. I, I like the way that after being a rookie for three months uh, by your own, you just uh, end up in, the, in a team that can help you out. Uh, although the benchmark, as you say, are the hardware requirement is actually quite. Uh, you can have AMD and ATI, uh, AMD and uh, NVIDIA, sorry, uh, as well as you have uh, a few like CPU benchmark as well as graphic uh, uh, graphic benchmarks. Uh, oh, so yeah. far, that's one of the new things. That's right. There was no 3D benchmark in the rookie rumble, so that's also an addition to the novice nimble. You learn 3D benchmarking. Uh, I have to say that uh, Cocotlan from France is the first team so far. Go guys, continue like this. I hope you're gonna win and be the first. Sorry, that was my French. Those guys comment. are very active, you know. They, they, they are st it, I went to their forum to just read through the thread, and it's uh, it's very interesting. Like they they are really trying to recruit, you know. They they have this spirit, and I think that's the exact spirit you should have for that competition. You have to find out who are the novices in your country that have no team. Just take them over, bring like kind of make a gathering, maybe a party, a bench party at your house, and just show them around the thing and get them into the competition. Sure, let us know on the on the chat if you're competing in uh, the rookie nimble or the novice nimbles. Uh, we saw that there there were some uh, some people earlier in the in the live chat from uh, friends watching for us. So maybe you can compete in the Cocotland team to uh, stay on the first spot, or compete in another team to get the first spot from them. Um, don't forget if you have any questions regarding these competitions and uh, and overall the uh, topics we had today, don't forget to send them on a live chat and we're going to answer them as fast as we can, of course. Um, there is a few other competitions, although, uh, that is running. One is called the MSI Beat the Fastest, a chance of winning <laughs> on MSI motherboards. What's going on with that, Timothée? Well, I think Dennis, maybe you could uh, introduce the competition briefly. Just tell us what it's about. Oh, um, yeah. So Beat the Fastest is a, basically it's a three-stage overclocking competition that is using MSI motherboards and one CPU, so you can't use any server-grade hardware. Um, and it's all based on hardware points. So if you have the fastest score for your MSI hardware, then you'll get awarded hardware points based on the hardware bot engine. And if you happen to score more points than everybody else, then it looks like you win. Uh, the, how, how the hardware points are calculated? Because that's something very special to the, uh, to the HW bot. That's not a, it's not just, oh, I'm the fastest, and then I get points. 
It kind of looks like it's hardware points. Tim would be able to know for sure, but based on what I can see, because we have uh, also somebody commenting on how they submitted a score, but they didn't get any hardware points, and it's because they had a faster score already on that hardware um, that, of course, didn't qualify, and um, yeah, so they didn't get any points. So they'll have to either rebench or uh, find some other motherboard and bench that. <laughs> yeah, but it's true. It's possible. For instance, uh, like you mentioned, some guys have uh, better scores already on that sa exact c same CPU, right? But just mm -hmm. different motherboard. So the score, yes, it, it would get hardware points, but in that specific case, it, it doesn't, right? So it does. It yeah. does. It, it, yeah, that's that's one of the tricky things with competitions where you are limited to one specific motherboard. You you rule out everything uh, else that you could have uh, achieved with a different different motherboard or hardware. So, yeah. so this uh, MSI beat the fastest competition is running from uh, February 17th, so it's already uh, going right now, and there's 15 days left. That's gonna end up on March 10. So, if you plan on coming to the Edge Daddy Bot uh, World Tour here at the LAN ETS on the 6, 7, and 8 of March, uh, you can actually use some LN2 to compete for that. You can actually use that time to compete on some of the competition at the same time. So that would be actually a good and interesting point of uh, of you doing uh, competing for online competitions at live <laughs> competitions there. That could be interesting well, to see there. But just like a lot of gamers go to LAN parties for a better ping, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Especially with the internet connection, you're gonna have you guys gonna have the LAN ETS. Uh, that's gonna be interesting to see. Oh, uh, where did you come from? Are you competing in any competitions? Oh no, I just came here for the internet. <laughs> <laughs> Did, did you have an anecdote like this, William? Uh, some some people just came to the LAN party just for fun? Yeah, well, people, now the thing is companies like control the servers, you know. Before we are able to do LAN servers, we are still able to do it for CSGO. But like League of Legends, StarCraft 2, all Battle.net game, uh, they're all working on the company server, so... The ping, you know, yeah, you could have a better ping with our connection, but <laughs> for League of Legends, it might not ping. make a difference. But for <laughs> a C for CS:GO, we're able to provide a better ping for people because we're hosting the server on site. So. Interesting, and actually, um, it's it's funny because every time I. Uh, I, I, I see you guys at the uh, on the admin area. You have a big screen and you see like all the packets going through the connection. And it's, you can <laughs> you can't read. It's going way too fast. Way yeah, too fast. Yeah, we we can track all the you know everything people are doing. We can see it. So <laughs> if you're downloading, uh, I don't know. Uh, I'm not gonna say uh, what kind of file we see on the screen, but uh, sometime uh, we see some strange stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Well, um, I think that's uh, we can wrap up the show. Uh, thank you guys for being here with us uh, tonight. Uh, thank you guys on the live chat for being with us. Uh, don't forget, if you still have any questions, uh, just uh, go for it on the live chat. Um, Timothée, what can we expect for the next OC show? That's going to be due in so, a week and a half from now. Yes, yeah, so actually, uh, the OC show is released every, every two weeks approximately. So the last one was released last, uh, last week. Uh, so this week there's not going to be any OC show besides the replay of this actual Q&A uh, episode. But the week after there will be another one and uh, I guess we'll have a lot more details regarding the LAN ETS uh, World Tour stuff. So we're going to have uh, details about uh, the hardware prices that will be part of the competition for both amateur and the guys on Extreme Coding. Um, there will be the same kind of details also for probably for the Gamers Assembly event that is going to take place in France. So that's the World Tour stop for Europe. Uh, there will probably be also quite a few other uh, other news. You know, there's some competitions and preparations by uh, by different partners and things. So it's uh, yeah, it's going to be a very interesting month in in general. So. Yeah, just stay tuned. There's, there's definitely material <laughs> in the next episode. And, and what is special is the next live Q&A for this OSHI show going to be right live from the LAN ETS at the Azure Robot World Tour events. 
So we're gonna That's do that great. right away during the during the event. We're gonna do the live Q and A. Uh, we're gonna be live the the complete weekend here on Overclocking TV to uh, to to cover the uh, the event. Uh, so don't forget that you can uh, see the next OC show in a week and a half, and in two weeks yep. we're gonna see you guys uh, right at the LAN ETS there. So that would be Sunday the eighth. Sunday the eighth. Same time than today, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Um, thank you, guys. Uh, thank you, T thank you, Timothy. Thank you, Dennis from uh, Hardware Asylum. Uh, thank you for being with us uh, so so many times. We do appreciate that. Uh, yep. Thank you, William, for being up that late, even if you have some exams going on uh, going on in the in the <laughs> coming weeks. So I don't want to uh, audit you too much tonight. Uh, thank you for uh, uh, making this uh, possible to work with the LAN ETS for this uh, HDB World Tour 2015. Uh, thank you, Timothy, for being there from uh, from Taiwan. Actually, actually, you're the only one that is uh, starting the day. Uh, all of us. Hey, are you know what? Finishing. I'm the only one working today in the office because it's holiday. Oh yeah, <laughs> it's true. Chinese that's Chinese New Year. <laughs> <laughs> Not so forced. I'm gonna go home after that. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you for being with us. Uh, I'm uh, Tim um, Isai from uh, Montreal here from Overclocking TV. Uh, thank you guys that did watch that on the live uh, on on Twitch. Uh, don't forget if you still have questions, you can answer. We can answer that in the next few minutes. If you guys watch that on Twitch, subscribe to the channel. So next time we go live, you know about that. If you watch this replay on YouTube subscribe to the YouTube channel because we do post the OC show there, we do post the replay although, and we do post a lot of videos, especially Timothy is working closely with HWBot to make sure there's a lot of uh, tutorials and how to uh, how to overclock your graphic cards, how to overclock your CPU that's going on uh, there, and a lot of how to use the benchmark and stuff like this. Uh, if you follow us on the on the, on the the media, if you're watching that on Facebook, share this, share the post. Uh, don't forget to like all the page and send that video to your to your friends. And of course, uh, if you follow us on Twitter or Instagram, just follow at Overclocking TV. Thank you guys for being here with us. Uh, I'm Truthman signing out. Bye. Keep pushing Bye. it. Yeah, guys. Keep pushing it. Keep pushing it.